My earrings are so dangly today. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Teeny weeny. Oh, I just sniffed it. <laughs> the wheel wheel. What am I saying? Hey guys, it's me, Sylvia, back with another video. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video, we're gonna be doing a full face of makeup using only brand new products or really, really hyped up products that I have not yet featured on my channel, but I see your guys' requests asking me to review, asking for my opinion on these specific products. So we got the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like I got a whole play-by-play -play on this foundation on Twitter, but I am gonna try it out for the first time today, give you guys my opinion and a bunch of other products that are new in Sephora and some Fenty products I think we got in there, some drugstore, got a whole lot of everything. So I'm very excited to see how these products apply, if they're worth your money or if they're a mm -mm, honey. <laughs> that was really lame, but I kind of just thought of that right there on the spot and I'm really proud that it rhymed. But before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed. I drop two new videos a week. I don't want you to miss out on them. I want to see you back here again. So subscribe and join my S Club. And without further ado, let's get into doing all makeup using new products. Okay, so for primer, I'm gonna try out this new Origins Original Skin Pore Perfecting Cooling Primer with Willow Herb. It's a tinted mousse. It's like bubbling in my fingers and this feels and looks so weird. I have to say that is the most interesting texture consistency of a primer that I've ever used. Whoa, it's very cooling. I thought it'd feel like nothing because it's like so moussey, but it kind of feels slimy. It's supposed to be for all skin types. I'm oily combination. And it says it's a cooling airy mousse primer that leaves your skin looking fresh, perfected, and softly glowing. Definitely has some color to it. It's very soft and feels like it's really smoothing. It's not sticky. It's it's absorbed into my skin now, very, very comfortable. It was really cold putting it on and I like that because that's like kind of energizing, you know? It has kind of a citrusy smell too, which I really like, but it's very, very subtle. So if you don't like scents, I feel like you won't even mind it. And I feel like immediately I could start to see what it said it would do for you, which is that it's cooling and smooth out your pores. It's also supposed to help with dullness and I think it definitely did that because my skin overall has more of a glow to it. So I'm feeling that so far. And as long as the foundation goes on okay and lasts a long time with it, I think I'm gonna definitely keep using that. But as you guys know, I do update the description with updates on the product and how it wore and how I liked it after using it a couple times. Check out the description if you wanna know more about any of the products we talk about in this video. But for now, we'll just give our first impression, which is that I really like this one. Moving on to the next product. So next up is foundation and we're gonna give the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation a try. This is definitely one of the most requested products to review on my channel as of late. This is what the PR package looks like. There's actually two types of the Shape Tape Foundation. There's the hydrating one, which has this little blue strip on it and a little water drop to let you know. From what I've seen, this one seems to be a little bit more sheer and a little bit more luminous, which is what I assumed. And then you have the more classic shape tape, which is the mattifying super full coverage version, which has the dark purple strip on it. They also sent a few of their shape tape concealers to try with it. And then two applicators, one is a brush and one is a sponge. So we're gonna try both of those. And they actually came out with a whole collection. So they sent a couple of other items, some brushes, there's a eye palette, I think this is, and then an eyeshadow primer as well. So we might dip into those later on too. So before we get right into testing out the foundations, I feel like we have to talk about what went viral on Twitter. And that's the fact that they did not have an all-inclusive shade range because they came out with essentially like three deeper colors. Everybody's already talked about it. I'm sure you've seen it on Twitter just because it was a huge thing and for good reason. I think I agree with the majority when I say that in 2018, there should be no reason brands are not being inclusive for deeper skin tones and all races, all skin tones, all of that. I feel like you have to include that now and should have always included that just because of how important it is to really cater to everybody and to have something for everybody because that's just so heartless and offensive like if you try and go to a counter and you can't find the right shade for you just because they simply don't make it that would break my heart for sure it was a huge no-no that they did not come out with more deeper shades right off the bat especially since they came out with such a wide variety of lighter colors i first only saw an article from pop sugar saying that the tart shape foundation was coming out and so I was really excited, but then they did another article doing the actual swatches and that's when I realized I was like, what are they doing? What is Tarte doing? And I think everyone felt that way. So for sure, I think it's awesome that the beauty community kind of came together and dragged Tarte for that because I'm hoping that other brands will see that and know that you can't really get away with that anymore and for good reason. Tarte has come out with like a statement though. They really didn't deal with the situation right away and they also kind of beat it around the bush when they did deal with it. Like it was an apology on their Instagram stories and they didn't really post 
posted everywhere, but they did apologize and they said that the reason they didn't come out with more shades is because those shades weren't ready yet and they felt the pressure to release the foundation anyway from the public because everybody really wanted to see it. So they decided to just go ahead with not all of the deeper shades done, which doesn't really make sense to me. I think a lot of people kind of called BS on that, but that was their reasoning. And then they also said that they are coming out with a lot more shades to cater to the deeper skin tones and more shades overall. So at least they're coming out with more shades, but I really don't know if it was because they got so much backlash or they really were coming out with those shades to begin with. I don't know, but thank you God for them hearing our voices and making more shades because if it's good foundation, we all want a piece, honey. But anyways, now that you guys know my opinion on that, let's get into testing it out. I'm gonna do half my face with the hydrating one, half my face with the mattifying one, and then we can review it at the end. So the main differences between both the foundation is that one is supposed to be matte, but not flat. It's supposed to minimize pores, absorb shine, and it has vitamin E in it to nourish, and there's supposed to be no flaking or caking. The other is supposed to be more hydrating, and more radiant, and nourishing. It's supposed to make your skin luminous and fresh. It has hyaluronic acid in it to hydrate, and it's also skin smoothing. Guys, I just read this. It says foundation isn't one size fits all. That's why we made two. So that's the reasoning for making two different formulas of foundation, but they didn't think of making more shade. So let's go in with the hydrating one first. The applicator seems to be exactly like the Shape Tape Concealer, which it seems like a lot of people aren't into it, but I kind of like it because it controls like how much you apply on your face. And it looks like they recommend using the Shaper Sponge with the hydrating one. Not sure why, maybe to give you that more natural kind of luminous finish. I usually like using a sponge for a very full coverage foundation. If you're using it with a sheer one, it might sheer it out too much. So right off the bat, you can see when it's drying, it kind of starts to get darker. Oh, it's blending out really nicely. So it's supposed to be hypoallergenic, really good for your skin, supposed to leave your skin plumped, luminous, it's supposed to last for 12 hours without creasing, caking, or fading. So this is one layer completely applied for a really like sheer lightweight foundation. It did seem to even out the discoloration of my skin completely. And I'm not like a sheer foundation kind of girl. So I was expecting to really dislike this one, but it feels like there's like nothing on my skin. And it does give you that like your skin, but better kind of look. I'm going to try and build it up on the areas where I need a little bit more coverage because it does say that it's buildable. Maybe if you didn't use a damp sponge too, it would give you more coverage. I will say though about this whole like shape tape foundation scandal or whatever it was, catastrophe. The one great thing that I really appreciated was the actual founder personally texted me and I'm sure many other beauty bloggers giving a personal apology and really saying that they're gonna do better, that they know it was a big mistake and basically hoping that we would trust them again and they feel bad for putting us in that position for having to review the foundation when it wasn't fully perfected. I'm just like vaguely remembering what she wrote, but it was really nice that they did actually take the time to send out that apology. Hopefully, you know, they learned for future launches and things like that, that that's not really acceptable anymore. And I'm sure that they did. So now that's it with a couple more layers and building it on problem areas. And I think it actually did a really good job. This is a really, really big blemish. So it is having a hard time covering that. Even with like a full cover foundation though I would probably go in with some color correcting to help cover that up because it's you know that big but other than that my skin looks really really good but I feel like if you're a natural makeup kind of girl then you'll probably appreciate this formula we'll have to see how it wears though so now on the other side let's go for the full coverage shape tape matte foundation and they recommend using it with the paddle to perfection foundation brush which looks like a hairbrush it's one of these guys right here I've never really been a fan of these type of brushes but we'll see how it does so what I'm reading up with both the products is they're supposed to be like good for your skin type of products filled with great ingredients. This one is meant to be full coverage, just like the concealer. It's supposed to smooth over pores. This one I'm noticing you can see like my pores still quite a bit kind of emphasized right here in my cheek area, maybe even my forehead, but I feel like that's because it has that dewiness kind of to it. Anything with shine is going to emphasize more than conceal. So let's go ahead now and try to blend this into my skin. Obviously very full coverage right off the bat. So this is supposed to smooth out your pores, give you a full flawless airbrush finish. This is really blending it out super, super fast because of how big it is. So that's one layer on. You can see this really large breakout right here still shows through a little bit. So usually on breakouts, I'll just dab so it doesn't move it around too much. I was definitely having a hard time with the brush to create like a seamless blend. So now I'm gonna just dab with a sponge to try and cover up that blemish nicely. So now I'm gonna conceal using the Shape Tape concealer. This one's not new, but I want to kind of stick with the Shape Tape theme 
same. It's almost exact same packaging. Honestly, the wand actually looks the exact same size too. Okay, maybe it's like the tiniest bit bigger. Now let's actually use their shaper sponge to blend that out. For some reason the foundation is kind of lifting there and it's becoming really splotchy. The sponge is kind of awkward for the under eye because of its sharp edges. So this is my complexion using the Shape Tape Foundation and Shape Tape Concealer. Definitely added a little bit more coverage to the hydrating foundation side, which I'm actually liking the way this side looks more than the matte side. I feel like my skin looks really dull and dry right now on the matte side, especially like around the nose area and the places where I have more dry patches. But let's see how it looks at the end of the video and just carry on. So now let's prime our lids using the Shape Tape Eye Primer Stick. So it just looks like a big old crayon. This came out with the Shape Tape Foundations and that Shape Tape Collection. Very, very creamy. It's like a salmon kind of color, almost like a color corrector. So it's taking a little bit to dry down. I don't know if it'll dry down completely. It still feels quite creamy on my lids, which that kind of concerns me for an eyeshadow primer. You want it to be able to stay put so your shadows don't go anywhere. Now let's do brows. I don't have a new brow pencil, but I have one of my all time favorites, the Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit. I'm using the shade number two because I've been recently bleaching my brows and I find it's just a lot softer and I love the way my brows look when they're a little bit lighter. So it has a super fine, precise tip, hence the name, which allows me to really imitate little hairs at the beginning of my brow here because I like to kind of give the illusion that my brows start a little bit further in than they actually do. And because my brow hairs are so thick, the precise tip can really get in between those hairs. Whereas if I was using something with a more blunt tip, it just like presses down on the hairs and doesn't really hit my skin. Love that it has this spoolie brush right on there. You don't have to go buying a separate one. I honestly don't really even use brow pencils that don't have a brush on them anymore. I just find it too inconvenient. Call me lazy, but I'm not trying to rummage through my stuff to find my spoolie brush. And also I have been using the Gimme Brow. It's a brow volumizing fiber gel. I wanted to talk about this in this video, not because it's new, but because I've been using it so much recently. This stuff is awesome to thicken the very fine, tiny hairs that grow at the very beginning there. And this is also really nice to use when you don't have a lot of time to do your brows. I just run it through my brows and it kind of fills them in by itself, like because it, it makes your natural hair is so full. So this is definitely the product I'll do if I want to do my brows in like two seconds. So let's move on to the rest of the face. I have the Tasha Denona Diamond and Blush Face Highlighting and Contour Palette. So the top part of the palette is all creams. It's got a cream clear highlight. So this just adds like luminosity. It doesn't have much color to it. And it's got this really pink cream blush and then a cream highlight. And then it's got the powder versions of all of them at the bottom. So let's use the cream blush first. I like more of like a neutral colored blush. So this might be a little bit too bright for me. Ooh, maybe if I use less next time, cause it's so pigmented. I'm noticing the cream product is harder to blend out on the matte side. It almost dries kind of like a powder finish, that foundation. So it is more difficult to blend out cream products on top of it. Blush is on. I actually really like that cream blush. It kind of brought the life back to the matte side of her face. So it's a highlighting and contouring palette, but I don't know that you could use any of these shades for contouring. Like they all just look like highlighting colors. Let's try out this shade right here. It's like the clear base one. And let's see what that does like on all of the areas where we want a little bit more luminosity. So it doesn't add color. It's just supposed to make you like more dewy. I think that'll be good for the more matte side since we want to bring back that life to our face. So add some a little bit here. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. So you can see it adds that sheen. Very natural, very pretty. And the two powder highlights on the bottom are different formulas. This one's like a glittery kind of top coat and this one has a lot more of that metallic finely milled shimmer. I swatched them both on my hand. The top one is the glitter kind of highlight and the bottom one is the metallic kind of powder. I feel like this whole palette is just based around glowing and I'm loving it. Is it worth the $89 though? I don't know if you're like me and you like to invest like in the packaging and all that then you probably will. Otherwise I feel like there's a lot of highlight palettes that are pretty great quality for a lot cheaper price. I just really love Natasha Denona products so I'm happy with so next up, let's set the under eye before it starts to crease. We have Becca's new under eye brightening setting powder. It's kind of small. So the inside has this little contraption here that you can twist, kind of like a salt and pepper dispenser. You know, you can close up the holes. Now let's just bake our under eye with that. And it's just supposed to set your makeup while brightening your under eye. It says it's infused with light reflecting pearl powders. So that kind of makes me think, will it pass the flash test? Will it look ashy on deeper skin tones? So let's not keep it on for too long though. Let's dust that off and then do the flash test. 
test. So I don't think it fully passes the flash test. I've taken multiple photos in different lighting. I thought first it could have been my film lights, but it does seem to show like remnants of the powder, especially on the inner corner here. So not too sure how I feel about that. I am gonna update the description because sometimes after like a couple hours of wear, it can melt more into the skin or even after the setting spray, it could get rid of that like powder sitting on top under there. But right now, I don't know that it passes the flash test. So moving on. So the face makeup is almost done. I'm feeling a little bit powdery right now and my face is feeling a little bit dry. So let's go in with setting spray before we do our eye makeup. I have the new version of the Urban Decay All Nighter. It's supposed to be a pollution protection environmental defense makeup setting spray. And it has patented time release temperature control technology. Whoa, it looks fancy. It's oil free, paraben free, all the things I like to hear. So you're supposed to give it a good shake and then set your face like normal. It has the same scent and everything as like the original All Nighter. So the idea behind this one is that it's really good for your skin. It acts as a barrier against any harsh pollutants and stuff in the environment. It's infused with minerals, including zinc, magnesium, and copper. I have the same experience as I do with the original. It doesn't really melt all the powders together as much as like MAC Fix Plus does, but it does have that longer staying power. Moving on to eye makeup. So for eye makeup, I'm very excited to try out this product because it is by a fellow YouTuber and not just any YouTuber, Chris and Dominique people. She is such a beautiful person and she makes great, great content. You should definitely check her out, but she came out with her own makeup line and this is the first product that she launched for her line. I think it's so dope that beauty YouTubers are now coming out with makeup lines, like that's the dream. But the packaging alone on this is goals. It's this rose gold metal packaging and then the palette is white with rose gold accents on it. So this is the Latte Palette by Dominique Cosmetics, which is her brand. And it's a beautiful palette inside. You can see the shadows are like double the size of normal. They're really huge pans, so it's gonna last you a long time. And right off the bat, I think this palette is beautiful. Like the shades tell a really nice story. You have some interesting colors in there, but you still have the basics that are like necessary for eye looks. So right off the bat, I'm really drawn to it. So let's give it a go, see what we can create. So let's go in with Vanilla Creme. You can use this to highlight the brow bone. I like this shade. It's kind of like a banana powder color. It still makes for a really nice brow highlight. Now let's use the shade Caramel. You can use that as a transition shade. Wow, these shadows are really, really, really pigmented and rich. Both mattes just went on really, really smoothly. The color isn't chalky at all, and they seem to be blending into each other really, really well. It really takes like no effort to blend these out, and that's what you want in eyeshadow. They're really, really buttery. I'm really loving this caramel color as a crease shade. Pretty. So now going in with pumpkin spice, and I'm obsessed with this shade. Probably my favorite warm shade in the palette. So we're popping that in right on the crease to deepen it up and just intensify that warmth. Now I'm gonna use this shade, Cold Brew. Immediately when I open this palette, that's the shade that caught my attention. So I definitely wanna try it out in this look. I'm just gonna apply that on the outer corner of my lid. I think all the shadows in this palette would work really good with each other to create so many different looks. Like that crease shade looks amazing with this color. So now it looks crazy, but trust the process. We're gonna go in with Mocha, this deep kind of chocolate brown shade right there on the most outer part of the eye. And we're gonna blend it out. So now going in again with Vanilla Creme, I'm gonna pack that on on the inner part of my lid where we have no shadow yet. So now even though there's such a huge contrast between these two shades, this blue one is so much darker, they're still so easy to blend into each other. And that's just attributed to a really good quality eyeshadow. So she honestly killed it with the formula of these mattes here. I'm obsessed. She killed it. And I can say that with 100% certainty. So moving on to eyeliner, I'm gonna use Nude Sticks Rock and Roller Easy Eyeliner. There's so much going on in this package that I couldn't even find the name of it. It's very similar to the MAC Roller Wheel one that I tried, but it's brand new, so we're gonna see how it compares. So it's just got a little wheel applicator, and it's supposed to make liquid liner easier for beginners. Super jet black. The wheel really only rolls like straight ahead, so it's hard to curve it. And because nobody's eye is like perfectly smooth, it's gonna make it more difficult to go along with the curves of your eye shape. It's honestly the exact same container and everything as the MAC one. So far, I don't really see any difference. So liner is on. It definitely took me a lot longer than it would if I had the regular pen. The wheel applicator, I'm just not used to it. I can't say that it's easier because it's not for me. Maybe if you practice with that more than you do the regular pen, you could get better at it. But if you want my full thoughts on that, you can watch the video where I talked about the one from MAC more in depth. The formula of this is really jet black, but it's also very 
shiny. It's not like a matte black and I personally prefer a matte black liquid liner. So I don't know that I'm liking this one that much and I probably won't use it again just because it took me so much longer and I'm still not feeling the way my eyeliner came out. So mm, that one just depends on your preference, I think. For mascara, I have a new product from Dior, the Pump and Volume Squeezable Mascara. So you're meant to actually squeeze the bottle. It has some divots there where you squeeze and then you turn the wand and you can actually feel the bristles in there. So that's meant to really load the product between the bristles so you can get a lot more volume, which is interesting. I've never seen a bottle that you can squeeze like that. It's supposed to instantly pack on product and give you volume. It's hard to see because of the liner, but it has completely coated my lashes within like three strokes. And the bristles aren't very thick and they're kind of sparsely placed throughout the wand, but I actually like that because it can grasp onto each hair and kind of combs through them. Usually I like wands that have really thick bristles, but this one's actually really good. This mascara is applied. I don't know how I feel about this. It does give you a lot of product on your lashes. It can really separate them. You have to be careful not to make it too clumpy unless you like that look. But if you don't, just apply a couple layers and you should be good. Made my lashes very, very thick. Moving on. So next up, I have a new drugstore product. This is the Faux Mink Collection from Ardell. They recently came out with this collection that's supposed to imitate a more luxurious like mink lash, but they're still very affordable. So both lashes are on. They're not a very long style, but they are quite dense. So they do add a lot of volume and glam that way, but it's hard to see the style because of my jet black liner. They do feel pretty comfortable and I do really like them. I just wish that this style was a little bit longer, but overall I love Ardell for their false lashes and I'm glad that they expanded and created a faux mink line because the more affordable options, the better. So eyes are completely done. Moving back to the face, I just realized that I haven't bronzed or contoured because I didn't have a new product for that. This one is pretty new from Tarte. It is the Amazonian clay waterproof bronzer from their Park Ave Princess collection. It's such a soft, like easily blendable formula that you don't have to worry about putting too much. You just kind of dust it all over and it does the work for you. Now, last step is lips. We have the new Fenty Beauty Matte Moselle Plush Matte Lipstick. I got it in the shade Single. Now I've been so curious about these because I'm a big fan of Fenty Beauty. I mean, Rihanna really is killing it with her brand right now. So it's in this beautiful rose gold packaging, I think, or is that silver? I can't tell the way it's reflecting the light. Anyways, it's in this mirrored kind of packaging and it's in a similar container as her Galaxy Collection lipsticks. So it does look really tiny. It's like very slim and tall. Let's apply, very pigmented. I'll just do one layer. Whoa, and my lip is completely covered. So you really only need one layer. Well, she did it again, cause the formula of this lipstick feels bomb. It's like super matte, but very creamy and like comfortable on your lips. This color is okay. I don't know how I feel about it with this eye look. I think I'm gonna apply a lip liner right now and then we're finito. All right, you guys. So this is the finished look, testing out all of those new products. I really love the way it turned out. I feel like there was way more hits than misses. I definitely could make all of them work. There was none that I was like, never again, you know? Like, like maybe the eyeliner was the closest one that I was like, eh, I really don't see myself using this again. But looking at my face overall after the video, I will actually say that I'm the most surprised by the hydrating Tarte Shape Tape Foundation, just cause I'm definitely not a light coverage, sheer like dewy foundation kind of girl. Like it looks very healthy. You can still see my blemishes seeping through, but for an everyday foundation, I feel like if you're the type that doesn't like a super full coverage, then you're really gonna like that one. But again, check the description for how it wore long term. And then on the other side, we have the matte shape tape foundation, which looks very, very flawless. It is very full coverage, but like I said, it will kind of cling to if you have dry patches. So you want to make sure that you're really exfoliating beforehand and prepping your skin really well. And then I think this one could look flawless. So I don't hate either of the foundations as long as they do wear well throughout the day. I do hate the fact though, that not everybody can try it right now. So they definitely deserved all the slack for that. But the winner overall of the video definitely has to be Kristen's palette. I was the most excited to try this one and it definitely exceeded my expectations. The formula is amazing for both the mattes and the shimmers and I really can see myself using all of those shades. So she killed it. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, check out these videos right here to watch another one of my videos. And of course, subscribe to my channel by clicking this bubble of my face right on this part of the screen. Do it right now. Three, two, one. Did you click it? Did you subscribe? Click it. You still have time. You still have time. Okay, time's running out. Okay, bye guys. Bye.